This is the world's cheapest jet-powered scooter. And I just bought it. <laughs> because today I want to investigate it by testing it out, upgrading it, and building my own extreme version to see which one's the most fun for the price. But let's start from the beginning. I've been waiting for this like all week. Uh, holy sh! Holy crap. Okay, let's see how f this thing is. Now at this point, the scooter has already traveled nearly 1,500 miles to get here from Atlanta, and since the kid I bought it from had just bought it from a different guy, I really had no clue what condition it was in. How much? Look, I gave him an extra 40 bucks for packing material, but like, I think he blew the whole budget. Yo, what the? F <laughs> oh my god, I didn't, oh I god. did not think it was possible for it to look worse in person. <laughs> it, it does. What the f*** did I buy? So the good news is everything's still in one piece, but the scooter's not working yet. So I start poking around with it to figure out why. Now what makes this board special is that it's powered by thrust from electric jets instead of gas ones. But for the life of me, I just can't get them to turn on. And I mean, I'm spending hours in that garage. I hop on the call with the task force, we bust out the oscilloscope, and like the best we can do is get it to blink a few times. So I call it a night, and the next day I call the local RC store to ask for some help. JTRC. Hey there, um, th my name is Lewis. So I I've got a little bit of trouble with a couple of ducted fans. Ah, uh, what are they for? Well, they're mounted on a skateboard right now. Oh, you've got him on a skateboard? Best bet, honestly, dude, from what I know, would be Dave at Hobbies. Hobbies is Dave. Dave, I've, I've been told you're just the guy I want to speak to. What, what type, what's the brand of your airplane? Uh, well, it's not so much an airplane as it is a, a skateboard. Dang, Dave really told me to take a hike. Hey, what's up, Louis? Yo, JT. Are you still down to take a look at this thing with me? Yeah, I mean, we could look at it. All right. And I'll just be honest, without JT, this would have taken me forever to figure out. So if you want to support the store, I'll link them in the description. For some reason, it's not getting signal. So, so it's do you either think the wiring yeah. or this board. Together, we figured out that the problem is actually this little control board that lets me run the RC motors directly. And since it worked when we connected it to a regular remote control. Sounds like something. Sounds way better. I ordered a replacement and swapped it in. Whoa. Well, we got something happening. I think that is really maximum throttle, which means what this thing really needs is an extra EDF or two. As crazy as it looks, this thing, it's just too underpowered. I mean, it's an embarrassment of a scooter, let alone a jet scooter, and I just need to go faster. So I had a couple plans to fix it. Plan one is to add a couple more electric jets to the $60 scooter and hope that that makes a difference. But plan two is to modify a high power e-scooter to run on my gas jet engine. Then I can take both to the Bonneville Salt Flats and test them head to head to see which is more fun for the price you put into it. So since it'll take some time for the electric parts to arrive, I'm gonna start working on the gas version right away. So Varla sent me these scooters and I've been riding them around for about the past week. Both of the scooters Varla send go over 35 miles an hour out of the box and they have full suspension in the front and back to absorb any bumps or rough surfaces. So I could modify either one for the project, but because the Eagle One has a flatter deck for mounting stuff and if it's an aftermarket steering adapter, that's the one we need to use. So I started gutting the scooter, ripping out the battery and disconnecting the motors to make space for the new jet electronics. Okay, yes, sick. Sick, okay, this is good, this is really good. I can totally use this to mount all my stuff. To mount the engine, I made a couple brackets that attach to the deck and bolted the engine down above the rear wheel. Then I took a utility gas tank I found on Amazon and strapped it to the scooter using hose clamps and VHB tape. I hooked up the pump, stuffed all the electronics inside the deck, and then re-gripped it for maximum control. All right, now that's what I call grip. And as soon as I finished the gas jet, the EDFs arrived. Okay, so if we want the electric jet to run actually well, we need to install 
some more jets on it. We're gonna give this a whirl. We're gonna see what happens. I rewired the scooter so I can control the new jets, and after testing them to make sure everything works. All right, Whoa. sick, they're working. <laughs> I gotta find a way to mount this thing to this board. And the hard part is not mounting it to the board. The hard part, how do I mount these jets? Well, those are both pretty darn sturdy. And with everything finally done, I pack everything up in my truck Bluebird and head off for Utah to finally test them at the Bonneville Salt Flats, where nobody cares how loud or how sketchy your stuff is. But the night I'm driving over, a giant rainstorm rolls through and I have no idea what the salt is gonna look like when I head out there the next day with my friend Jason. All right, so we're headed to the Salt Flats. I have some bad news and I have some good news. The good news is we're here in Utah. The bad news is that the salt might be covered in water, so yeah, that's uh, that's a wet, wet boy. Shoot, dude. I mean, it's it's. <laughs> All right, let's. I'm gonna say it like it is. <laughs> There's no scooter that's driving out here. No, oh, no, no shot. No. I mean, you, you want to stand on it in the bed, and I'll drive real fast. And sure, yeah, yeah, we can we can like pretend. Yeah. Nah, this. Uh, yeah. Sh the salt's covered in water, but since it's pretty shallow, it should be dry enough to use by Sunday, which means we have to kill a day to buy the sun some time. You know what we could do? If we could find a skimboard, we could just tow it behind a truck. And about 15 minutes after getting off the salt, I was in some of the worst pain of my life. All right, update on the pain. It's excruciating. I mean, that's literally the definition of salt in an open wound. I don't think you can get any closer to that. But this is no time for pain because I have scooters to test. So after we get back, I throw on some band-aids and the next day we head back to the salt to finally test these scooters, which we're really hoping is gonna be dry enough to ride. Dude, you know, normally I would say this is but I kind of love it. We got mixed results. The salt's dry enough for the big jet, but it's still too wet for the electric version, especially with those exposed electronics. So we took it back to the road to give it a fair chance. Okay, so we're gonna speed test the $60 jet scooter and see what it can really do. <laughs> Holy sh Yeah, I'm just kidding. With four EDFs, the electric jet scooter is a lot more fun than before. I mean, the board's too short, the fans are too loud, and the batteries get way too hot. But once you get past the jank, it's really fun to ride. Okay. We've all heard of diminishing returns. What about expanding returns? This thing is hilarious. The way it comes, it's honestly not enough fun to be worth like a hundred bucks. But as soon as you put these on it, I would pay 500. It's dumb, but it's so much fun to ride when it's got all four jets going. And if I'm being honest, I was really impressed. But can it really compare to a scooter nearly 10 times the price? I'll just be honest with you, it can't. Oh, okay. Let's talk about that. That was fucking crazy. This has to be the fastest fucking thing I've ever ridden. It also feels so much more dangerous than the bike. I will be honest with you, it feels sketchy. Yeah, there's no speed wobble, but... You are still on a scooter. And those tires are really narrow. It's not really a good or bad thing, it's just a feel. We should do a head-to-head -head electric versus jet. All right, $2,000 e-scooter versus $6,000 jet scooter.
Jason. So what do you think? What what's better? Uh Well, I had you in the beginning. I didn't know how tight it was going to be. There's no like acceleration curve. No. It's just faster, 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 yeah. faster. It's until the air resistance starts uh -huh. to stop you. If there's a speed to aim for, it's maybe 65, but I'm just gonna go as fast as I feel comfortable going. Don't push it past your limits, ever. Yeah, <laughs> but people do that shit all the time, you know? Like, like yesterday. What happened yesterday? Ah! Oh. <laughs> say top speed is between about 57 and 60. And you know what's fucked? I'm feeling comfortable on this. If there really more and more power to give, I could probably do 70. So yeah, you can have a lot of fun with a thing that costs a lot of money to make, but you can have almost as much fun with random projects from Facebook. So whatever you do, find yourself a project and get after it. And if you're lucky, maybe you'll stumble upon something just like this.